Good morning and welcome to Touch the Base Daily. My name is Ron Foster. I'm touching base with you as I always do every day, except for Sunday. Yes, I still come on on Saturdays. I can't resist you guys. I can't resist not coming on. I love to talk. I love to talk. I love to share. So guys, welcome. So I'm so happy. I'm just so happy. So grateful this morning on our Motivation Monday it's Motivation Monday, and you know how we do it on Motivation Monday. So how are you all doing? I see in here, Chrissy says, good morning. I see Kelly says, good morning. Good morning from Miss G.R. Houston Jack. She's in the building. How are you guys doing? Let's see who's going on on Instagram. Are you any, any folks on Instagram there? Oh, no one's there on Instagram. Oh, it's still, oh, oh, maybe not. Maybe they're popping on. I don't know. Anyway, I don't see anyone in the Instagram world. It looks like I guess we've all converted. I think the whole community has moved over to YouTube. What's going on, Amparo? It was so nice to finally meet the great Amparo, the photog, on Saturday. She came out to our meetup group, and we're going to talk about the meetup um, trip we had on Saturday at the Brooklyn Museum. But I finally met Amparo in person, and I got a chance to hug her. She got a chance to hug me. She got the chance to hug Janet and all the other folks that were there, some of the folks that are in this community that were also at the meetup. And we had such a great time at the Brooklyn Museum, and um, it was absolutely wonderful. And since we're on the topic of the Brooklyn Museum, uh, yeah, that was part of my weekend celebration. I had a great birthday weekend, and one that was spent at the Brooklyn Museum catching the giant show, uh, Alicia Keys and her husband's uh, art collection, extensive art collection. It was unbelievable. I did not. It over it was it I it over uh it it outperformed my expectations. That's what it was. That's what I want to say. It outperformed my expectations. Lots of amazing work, lots of amazing artists. Um that's literally the top artists in the world uh, were on this uh in this uh exhibition. So if you have not gone to it, it's at the Brooklyn Museum. Check it out. I advise going during the week when it's not as crowded, but Saturday obviously was crowded, but that's when we have our meetup. Uh, we were there from two to four. Um, it was absolutely wonderful. And then the wonderful Elsie, my my, co my colleague, my sister, my meetup, uh, one of the foundations of my meetup group. She's one of the first people to help start it. And um, she treated me out to lunch and it was beautiful after. And some of the other folks, in the meetup group also uh, attended. And so we had a great time. We also, at while we were at the restaurant uh, there, uh, what's the name of the restaurant? I forgot the name of it already. But what was, we, the bartender was so cool. He introduced us to two bar, two beers. Now, for those that don't know, Ron loves beer. And I usually go, when I'm in another country, I always ask the bartender, what is the beer of your country? Uh, so when I'm in Nigeria, I think it's Star. When, uh, or am I getting it wrong with Ghana? Ghana, I think it's Red Star, Red something. Uh, when I, you know, so anyway, I travel around, I grab these beers and I just fall in love with them. Uh, but this particular is a black owned, I'll, I'll share it later on. But it's a black, it's two black owned beer companies in Brooklyn and New York City um, that he introduced us to. And the beer was excellent. Uh, I'm looking for it right now in my page, my photography. One is called, let me see, I got, it's called Brown Girls Brew. Brown Girl, Brown Girls Brew. If you get a chance to check that out, if you like beer and you want to support uh, our brothers and sisters who are in the beer industry, this is uh, it's called Brown Girls Brew. 
excellent beer. And I fell totally in love with uh, uh, another company. It's by Cooper, Cooper Sun, um, Cooper Sun, C O P P R E R. And I'll put it inside this, this little chat here. And the beer is called Blues Dance Pell Ale. I love beer. <laughs> As you can tell, I got so excited. I got so excited with the beer. And, um, so, but it was so nice to be introduced to also um, new uh, beer um, creators, uh, black beer owners, you know, company owners that we can support. And uh, it was absolutely beautiful at the Brooklyn Museum. And yes, Empire was already giving the shout out. Jamal Shabazz, we were in front of your exhibit at the museum, outstanding. Uh, we had so much fun. Um, knowing that Jamal, uh, J Jamal uh, Shabazz's uh, work was right there, and I was, I was, I was thrilled for him because it was right across from Gordon Park's collection, and I heard um, it was told to me that Alicia Keys has she and her husband have the largest Gordon Park's collection. And it showed they had three sections of Gordon Park's photos. And not only did they have the photos, but usually when I go to gallery shows uh, that show off a little bit of Gordon Park's, they're usually the smaller frames. They're usually like 16 by 24s. I see like uh, usually smaller, like maybe 12 by 12 by eights or something like that. These were large prints of Gordon Park's works. I was like in Gordon Park heaven. There was so, and what was beautiful about seeing these, these pieces of work uh, is that you could just hang out there and just absorb and take it in. And then after you went across the wall, it was kind of like Gordon Park's and Jamel. Gordon Parks and Jamel, Gordon Parks and Jamel, because it depends on how you walk through the, the blue room. I call it the blue area or the blue wall area. And um, and, and, and Jamal has some of his favorite pieces, uh, famous pieces, uh, especially the subway uh, shots are always the ones that get me because as a teenager in um, New York City, I started traveling on the subway at, believe it or not, 10 years old. <laughs> Really before then, when my cousins used to pick me up uh, and take us on the subway, but I've been riding New York City subway system since I was a preteen. And, uh, but I also went to school out in Long Island City. And, uh, and so I used to take the train out to Queens all the time, the G train basic, basically, and the number seven train. Um, when I visit my cousins, I would take the A or the C train. Um, cause we always took the AC to Manhattan or we took the ANC to Queens. And, uh, and when I look at Jamel's work, it, it always brings me back to all those beautiful moments, hanging out with classmates on the, on the train, hanging out with my cousins on the train, hanging out with friends, or just simply being on a train by myself with my big giant book bag and hanging out in the subway system of New York. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of jokes to be said about those days on the subways in New York. But when you look at Jamel's work uh, on those those featured shots uh, at the uh, Brooklyn Museum, you will be taken back. It will take you down memory lane and you will have, like myself, I do believe, fond memories of our upbringing. So it was absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Jamal, for having such a beautiful uh, selection of work. Um, but again, the Brooklyn Museum, if you're in New York, come and check it out. It is so worth it. It outperformed my expectations. Uh, let's see else. what else is you guys are saying out here. Uh, <laughs> Amparo said, it's the rites of passage in New York City. Yes, the New York C City subway system. Uh, and uh, see who else is in here. Hey, Janet is in the building. Janet was there with us. Janet is in the building. Uh, what's going on? I see here. Wow, really? That's incredible. Gordon Parks is a goat. G O A T. Great. It's of all times. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shabazz is in the building, so y'all know he's here. 
And um, Brian Young is in the building. What's going on, Brian Young? Mr. Young is in the building. Jazzy's in the building. Bryson's in the building. And he says, as always, what's up, Ron? What's up, RLP family? What's up, CQ family? Happy Money Making Monday. The last month of Black History Month. Well, it's the last week. It's the last week of Black History Month. I know what you meant, Bryson. I know what you meant. Yes, I know what you meant. Um, so it was absolutely wonderful. Let's see who's in. Hey, Omar just popped in into the Touch Base Daily on our YouTube channel. Guys, if you are in the youth, if you are in Instagram, come on over to our YouTube channel because that's where we live and thrive. Can I say it again? That's where we live and thrive is on our YouTube channel. If you are not there, get there. Just simply go to YouTube and put in Touch Base Daily and it'll pop on up because we've been there long enough. So it just the search knows us. It knows us. Speaking of knowing us. Um, so again, the birthday the birthday um festivities was intense this weekend. I am going to need a couple of days to recover. Recover from this weekend. Uh, again, on Friday night, I ended up at the Harlem, uh, for those that weren't here on Saturday, I talked about it, on the ha at the Harlem 2024, 2024 Harlem Fine Arts Show. What an amazing collection of African-American, Caribbean-American, African-American, Caribbean, African, European, African, Africa. I always like to just say Africans. Can I just say, African artwork was on high display at the Glass House on the west side of Manhattan on this weekend. And I had my um, friend, colleague, Patreon supporter, friend, client, she treated me out to a beautiful evening at the Glass House to check out this amazing work. Um, and guess who? I saw this amazing piece, amazing artwork called Franklin. I, I should have had a cue so I can show you it. It was absolutely, because we had just talked about Franklin on Thursday. And there he was in a beautiful frame. I almost purchased it. <laughs> I almost purchased it. It was so beautiful. I was like, oh my gosh, Franklin. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, if you were here on the Thursday, and you can check out on the Thursday repeat, we got into the conversation about Franklin, um, Franklin from the Charlie Brown, the Peanut Gang, and how Franklin sits on the left side of the table where the rest of the kids are sitting on the right side of the table. Franklin sits in a lawn chair, and the rest of the kids are sitting in chairs. And then we talked about the history of Franklin, that Franklin was added to the Peanut group the peanut characters because of, as a reaction to Martin Luther King being assassinated. And a lot of people don't know that. Pretty shocking, right? That they added Franklin to the peanut gang be as a response, as an honor to bring um, recognition, I should say, well, in response to Martin Luther King being shot and killed April 4th. So anyway, just so you know, give you a little history behind Franklin and why Franklin is part of the peanut gang. Giving you some history. You know how I feel about that, right? I always feel we should always leave this platform smarter than we arrived. What's going on? I see Rashawn's in the building. Serena's in the building. Derek T. Tuggle is in the building. What's going on? So good to see you all. Gary Jackson, my brother, is in the building. Ah, uh, yes, everybody's here. Christy says corner. Yes, it was. It's also called the HFAS at the art show. Beautiful. But you know what was most remarkable? Is that I saw a lot of my followers on Instagram that are in the art world. Uh, people that I follow and they follow me. And they were there. Uh, it was incredible. I mean, people were yelling out my name out of the crowd, and I was like, who's calling me? Who knows me here? They're like, Ron, Ron, happy birthday. I saw you on YouTube. <laughs> I was like, really? 
Oh wow, we get we're getting some traction. We're getting some traction. People are seeing this platform on YouTube. And so we I ran into literally eight people at the art um show at the at the uh um Harlem Fine Arts Show. So shout out to the folks there. Thank you for the invitation. And I mentioned it also Saturday, is that someone recognized me and also started talking to me. I ended up talking, taking pictures with all these famous people that were in the crowd and people wanted to take pictures and I took pictures with them. Uh, yeah, who else? I have, my, I, have, I, have, I have the cards of all these people that gave me all their cards and stuff. And um, but a shout out to Curtis L. Archer, who is a Harlem Community Development uh, Corporation president. Um, and he and I took photos together and we're gonna be connecting with each other. So uh, it was beautiful. And then one of the videographers, she saw how, I guess she saw how people were interacting with me. And she said, hey, can I interview you about the show? And I was like, me, me? Guys, I am a believer you must be ready at all times. You must be ready at all times because you never know when someone will call you out. And so she mic'd me up, got the camera ready, and she interviewed me in regards to the show. I was one of her interviewees. How incredible is that? Um, so I'm excited. I, I had a great weekend. Then also, since we're on this weekend, and I know you guys are all participating in all this stuff, <laughs> Serena says, you're, wait, wait, I, there, I lost, Serena says, you're famous, Ron. Can I have your autograph? <laughs> it was an out-of-body experience. Uh, I couldn't believe I was being interviewed. I was just like, I'm usually interviewing people on this platform, but I was, you know, I very rarely that people, I've been interviewed probably seven, maybe six times in my life on YouTube channels and stuff like that. But this was really out of the blue at a art show in this beautiful lounge where all these, all the big people were hanging out. And so because my client and friend who invited me is like, she's like a big wig in some ways, uh, she uh, had access to this room. And, Again, you must be ready in season and what they say, out of season. Be ready. Always be ready. Uh, Empower says, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That's right. That's right. Uh, Diary says, yes, sir. Love hearing that, Ron. Um, Mimi says, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Another one that's <laughs> affirmative. Affirmative, Mimi Hinton. Affirmative. So after that, it was, it was, um, the birthday weekend was on fire. I can't, I mean, they made, my friends made 60, like the best birthday weekend ever. And um, so after that, got on a train, went up to uh, my buddy's house in Mount Vernon, and then we went to catch Bob Molly, the Bob Molly One Love movie. Have, has anyone seen it? Does anyone, did anyone enjoy it? Uh, I did. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Let me put, can I put that up here? I think I have it here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Where is it? Where is it? I thought I had it queued in here. Well, anyway, Bob Marley, um, One Love, was absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. Has anyone seen the movie? Has anyone seen the movie? One Love. Bob Marley. It was absolutely cool. Very cool movie. And um, I, I, I did have it queued here. I mean, let me, I have it on my IB, IMDB um, account. And uh, I'll show that real quick. I, I can share, but I won't have the sound, and, but you'll at least see, see it. And um, it was absolutely an amazing movie. Um, I gave it a seven. Um, most people are like, Raw, what did you, how, how do you rate it? Uh, on IMB, on the IMDB site, they give it a whopping 6.5. I gave it a little more than that. I gave it a seven. 
Um, this is from the IMBD um, site here. Uh, and um, but I really loved the movie. I love the movie. I felt like it should have had more, but that was just me. Uh, but I learned a lot about Bob Marley that I did not know. And I also learned about Jamaican culture. Uh, my buddy who is Jamaican and a proud Jamaican, he, I, I was able to ask him a lot of questions as things were happening uh, in the movie. Uh, I did not know that the fast, the, the people that were fighting, uh, you know, this, yes, I mean, this, you can, it's pretty simple. It's not giving the movie away, but at the end, I noticed that there's two, you know, at the part that like, Jamaica is about to break out into civil war and um, Bob Marley concert, one love uh, concert brings these uh, fashions together and uh and on the stage he has the two rep the two leaders of these fashions um shake hands to bring unity to jamaica but to my shocking and to my i did not know that both of these people were white i always thought these fashions were black i don't know why but i did and so i learned a lot about jamaica i did not know uh, lots of good music, you, the, the songs, the music, um, the scenes, the history. And what it does, I think it does a good job. And I'll just bring this off. I, I think it does a good job in making you, if you're interested in Bob Marley, going down the rabbit hole of finding out more about his life. Um, like and you see in the movie, they only show five children. However, he had 11 or 12, move, 12 children. His wife was amazing. The whole movie, without giving it away. Not giving the movie away, but check it out. It is worth going to see. It's number one in the box office for two weekends in a row. So this weekend, they are number one for this weekend pass. So check out um, Bob Marley, One Love. Check that out. Okay, what else are you guys saying in here? Oh, yes, yeah, so Elisa, he had a lot of children. Yes, 11 and 12. 11, some, some writers say 11, but most um, articles say 12. Yes, he had a lot of kids by different women while married to one wife. And she was an amazing wife. She held it down no matter what. No matter how many children she brought, he brought home, she took care of them as her own. Rita, Molly, absolutely amazing story. I don't know if many women of today's world will be able to do something like that, but he did. And um, quite interesting, quite interesting. Uh, Paolo says, Jamaica. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Jamaica out of many one, no. Um, no such thing as white or black Jamaicans. That's right. To make there's many different people in Jamaica culture. There's Indian. There's Chinese. There's white. There's black. There's all Irish. There's Scottish. There. It's interesting the 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 demographics of the country. It's worth it. I think it says worth getting to know. I love I love learning. So that is one of the things I learned. A whole lot more about Jamaica. My friend was so happy to tell me because he is a proud Jamaican. Like I said, he does not hesitate to let me know he is Jamaican. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so just a little bit of the in the news. First of all, folks, there's a couple of things that happened this weekend that I need to bring to your attention. Uh, weekend in Review, let's do that, let's say that, Weekend in Review. Uh, we already talked about the China uh, Chinese Day Parade was excellent, that was wonderful here in New York, celebrating the last day of the Year of the Dragon. Uh, that was the last stop, that was the last stop of my birthday um, stops. Uh, my friends treated me to brunch on Sunday, and then we ended up at the Chinese um, Parade um, New Year's Parade. It was absolutely wonderful, uh, which led to my posting and that we still have to uh, keep in mind that there are pockets of our population that practice Asian hate. 
And so we need to always combat hate of any kind, but just wanted to bring awareness. I posted um, last night uh, some photos of uh, the protest that I was part of and photographed um, during uh, two years ago while we were, uh, when Asian hate was at its peak. So, but it was beautiful to see so many people out there, so many um, cultures, uh, just watching the Chinese um, uh, New Year's parade. It was beautiful. But can we talk? First of all, Nikki Haley loses again by 20 points. Um, just so you know, it was, a, it was definitely, uh, you know. However, though, she says something that was quite fascinating. I, I, I agree with her. She says, I got 40% of the vote. vote. That's still a lot of people. 40% is not, I mean, 40% of her people, 40% can make a big difference in a, uh, uh, what we call a two-party election. There was a primary. But if there's an election between Trump and Biden, her 40% can make a big difference if they decide not to show up or not to vote for Trump or vote for Biden. So it's not something to say, well, it was only 40 people, 40% 40 of the people. Keep an eye on the elections. I know. Y'all probably say, what's right? Lauren's always talking about politics. I think you need to know what's going on in the political world. Um, also, what ha what's happening in politics. Did you see the, not once, but twice, Trump's crazy fiascos? Well, I should say not fiascos. I would probably just say racist, outright racist stance on issues. And one is he's at the uh, Black Caucus. Uh, no, let me change it. Not Black Caucus. Black conservatives, Black Republicans, Black conservative uh, event that happened this weekend past. And he says, I can see the light is so bright. The light is so bright. The only people I can see are the blacks. And yet there are still black people that follow this moron. Still black people that follow this moron. Speaking of morons that are black that follow this, this idiot. Guys, keep an eye on this wonderful, and I'm being sarcastic. Beware of this guy, Congressman Brian Donald. Yes, I have to mention this. I have to, because... Every time I see him on TV, it makes me want to scream. He is so sold his soul to the devil. I hate calling someone a devil, but you know what? Trump may fit that one. And it is just horrible to watch. And then they were talking about IVF, and he uses the term. Yes, people have a right to breed. Where did that come from? No one use. Have you ever heard of a black person using the word breed when it comes to procreation? Check this. Check him out. You may want to. I mean, just to be aware of him. I mean, he was on uh, Meet the Press. Meet the sorry. Yeah, Meet the Press this morning, this weekend. You just can't believe that this person exists. So you got you have this gentleman. I'm being nice by saying gentleman. You have Brian Donalds, who's in the Congress, the House of Representatives, representing Florida. And you have the other Negro, not Negro person, probably I can use that, Tim Scott in the Senate. And these two, you wonder, are they black? You just can't, you cannot believe how they sold their souls to Trump. I mean, and not only, it's one thing to believe in maybe Trump's policies, but to do the tap dance, the master tap dance for Trump is quite sickening. Sorry I had to go there. I just had to bring it to your appearance. I had to bring it there. Ugh, ugh, it just, it's, ugh. It was just so disgraceful. Uh, yeah, <laughs> as Brian says it, this weekend was stark reminder that our democracy is at stake, is at stake. 
It is. It is. And he says, uh, it would be the one from Florida. It would be the one from Florida. Insane. Yeah. Ali says, Scott is definitely tap dancing. Tap dancing. Why? Why? For someone that doesn't care about you and then had the nerve to say, I, I compare himself to Christ. To, can, can we go there? I am being prosecuted because of you. Because of you. They're indicting me because of you. And said, Black people, Black people love me. Black people love me because I'm being persecuted just like them. I'm in being indicted just like them. As if Black people are criminals and always worry about being indicted. Hello, last time I checked, most of us are not indicted. Most of us have not committed crimes. The majority of us have not committed crimes. But yet, the Republican Party keeps showing their racist, racist foundation. So anyway, but can I say something I'm really excited about that happened this weekend? Friday, we had a great show. I have to say, I think we did. I think our community had a great conversation on Project 2025. We gave you just enough so you can go out and research it for yourself. We laid down a lot of information on Friday about Project 2025. What is 2025? Someone may be saying, what is that? It is the rule book, the plan for the conservative movement for the country if the conservative leader is put into place as president. And I felt really good. Do you know why I felt good? Because on Saturday, Ali Belshi from MSNBC broke it down. And everything that we talked about on Friday, he said the same thing. It felt good that we talked about it on Friday on, you, on you know, YouTube. And then MSNBC is talking about it the following day. I don't know. Maybe they heard us. I don't know. Great. And so I put the link into our broadcast channel. So if you go to the broadcast channel, if you need more information on this Project 2025, click on it in our broad, broadcast channel. If you're in Instagram, so those are your Instagram on our broadcast channel, check it out. I put it in there because yes, these two platforms are dual. We have an Instagram and we have our YouTube. YouTube is we have a great experience, but we still have a base in Instagram. So go to the broadcast channel and you will find the link to Ali Velshi's breakdown of Project 2025. And um, guys, hopefully this is going to get traction because we need to be talking about this every single day. People need, the Democrats need to be running on Project 2025. It's already there. The Republicans have it already laid out. The Republicans have it all in paper, on form, in paper, written. You don't have to make it up. You don't have to, like, try to scrounge and look for it. It's there in mainstream. Thank you, Ali Veshi from MSNBC, joining the ranks of Joy Reid and and Rachel Maddow and a bunch of other folks that are out there talking about Project 2025, but it needs to be talked about. This should be a campaign strategy. It really is a choice between two kinds of nations that people want. Do you want to live in the Project 2025? It's all laid out. Or do you want to live in a democracy? Yes. Just saying.
Yes, I had to go there. I had to go there. Hey, Trish. Good morning. Trish is in the building. Uh, yes, national news needs to bring it up. Yep, national news needs to bring it up. Yes, Amparo said. Um, Velshi said it best. He laid it out. Pretty much how we talked about it. But he laid it out. Yeah, also um, the young lady that wrote um, the book called Strong Men, Mussolini to Trump. Check out. That's another good book. Strong Men. Okay. Go. <laughs> Go there loudly. Folks, I am I am I am convinced we have to use our platforms to save our country and to bring awareness to things that need to be talked about. I'm, I'm glad that America is trying to, to work out the, the setting of what's going on in on the Gaza Strip and telling Israel, come on, you have to stop. The sad thing is, is that Netanyahu does not want to listen. He wants to continue to bomb the people on the Gaza Strip. Not much left to bomb. Millions are destituted. Ugh, that's another subject for another day. But I just wanted to bring it to your attention. America is trying to work on it. But there is resistance. There is resistance. Okay. It is time to for the main part of this day. Today is Motivation Monday. And so, oh, well, first of all, let me see what you guys are saying before I start. Because I see guys in here, but she said it best. Trump, I see here. Oh, Jasmine says this. Their racism has been on full display. Trump is the same clown that was calling for law and order towards black citizens during his first presidential run. Remember? Shoot them and ask questions later. Remember that? For black folks that don't get it, if there are, I mean, they say there's 8% of the black population, 8% of the black population that are Trump supporters. Well, I have nothing but interesting words to say to them. Wake up. Just wake up. Wake up, black folks. We are we need to be united. People of color need to be united. Women need to be united. We all we are bigger. Right? If black people, Asian people, Spanish people, women of all races come together, do you know how powerful that platform is? Trump could never win against all of us. Ugh. Wake up, folks. We are greater together. We are greater together. Janice says, Ali does a good job on breaking it down. Yes, he does. It was so refreshing to know that we were in lockstep with what's going on, the conversation. Uh, yeah, yeah. At least that's in the very. He doesn't have to listen because they are still sending him money for weapons. That is Netanyahu. Yeah, they need to cut him off. They need to stop sending him money. Mm hmm. Uh, read up and wake up. Thank you, Trish. Read up and wake up. Yes. Okay. Okay, so a gratitude for those who rekindle. Today we're talking about a gratitude for those who rekindle our spirits. Gratefulness. So I'm going to give you a quote. I'm going to give you a quote today. I'm going to give you a quote. At times, our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has causes to think that deep gratitude of those who have enlightened, or I should say, have lightened the flame within us. That's by Albert Schwartz. Schwitzer. Um, and it just reminded me of this weekend, or just in generally speaking, is that 
as entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, photographers, creatives. You work in an office. You work, you're a working mom. You take care of the household. You take care of your community. You take care of your, your environment. You are responsible for so many things. All of us have responsibilities in our society and the people we are around, the people that are connected to us. I say this to all the creatives, all the photographers out there doing their work, going out on the front lines, all of the photographers that are on the battlefield, that are in uh, Ukraine, that are in, uh, is, I mean, in, in, on the Gaza Strip, those that don't know, Lots of photographers have been killed in 2023. Yeah. In these war zones. They're not talked about. They're not celebrated. But a lot of photographers, reporters, but photographers, photojournalists have died over the last year in the conflict in Ukraine and in Israel slash Gaza and other parts of the world as well. So it's easy for us as we take our stand to sometimes lose our flame. Our flame sometimes get a little snuffed out. The pressures of the world, the pressures of, of society, the pressures of everything that's going on in the world. Can I say, can I say, can we celebrate the people that bring a kindling to our flames? Now, I can't say my, I cannot say my flame was snuffed out at any point in the last couple of weeks. You guys keep rekindling my flame. People say, Ron, you, you come on every day. It's a lot of work. Believe me, believe it or not, I gain more from you than you possibly can gain from me. This is a, what they call an exchange. We are here as an exchange. If you're in this community, it's because we are in, a, in, ex, in, a, in an exchange. We exchange information. We're exchanging the joy, the gratitude. We are in exchange. I always say the great exchange. When humans interact with humans, we are in the great exchange. And so as we go through this week, this is our Motivation Monday, so we, you know, we, we got to get ready for the week. We got to get ready for the week. Can we one first have a moment of gratitude for all the people that continue to rekindle our flame? Can we celebrate them? Can you, maybe, we, maybe we need to kind of like reach out and say thank you to those people that rekindle our flame, the flame to continue on, the flame to do our work and do it most efficiently, right? We need to rekindle. We need to celebrate those folks that rekindle us. When that flame starts to get a little small and someone breathes air, you know, you get some air. You need some air for some a flame to, to for the flame to get accelerated again. You need some air. So we need someone to breathe, to breathe on the flame. Breathe into us. Encourage us. I thought about this this weekend. The words of encouragement that came through from you guys celebrating this 60th birthday. 
have made me so full. I mean, I have people that were sending me all kinds of stuff all weekend. Ron, thank you for what you did here. Ron, thank you for what you did there. Remind, I forgot. I don't think about these things. I don't think of these things. We just live our lives to do the best we can. I got so many of these, these reports. And I sat in many places at any given point of the day. And I said, I am so thankful for people. Now, sometimes people piss me off. But when I look at the grand scheme of things, there's nothing more beautiful than the human contact of individuals. Humans speaking life into each other. We should be speaking life into each other. Right? Right? We, this week on this week, as we transition into March, Kindle, yes, we wanna, we, first thing we wanna do is be grateful for all those who have fanned our flame. That's what mission number one this week, being grateful. Say their name, call their name, call them. Reach out to them. Say, thank you. Thank you. I'm having a moment of gratitude. Thank you for fanning my flame, for breathing air into my flame so I can continue on with my mission. We all have different missions here. We have missions to do. We all have a task. We all are called to something. But we need to, we need that, we need that person. We need those people to fan our flame. Part two, not only are we coming into this week at a, with gratitude of all the people that have fanned our flames. But guess what? We are also going to be a fanner. We this week, can we all take, can we all, I, I don't want to, we can't join hands, but maybe we do a virtual hand hold and shake. Can we shake hands and say, this week, this week, we're gonna fan someone else's flames, right? There's no greater joy than when you see someone's flame is burning out. Cares of life, life can be hard on a lot of folks. It can be hard on us. But when someone takes the time to breathe life into you, when someone takes the time to say, you can do this. You may, yeah, you've got a couple of hard hurdles to, to cross over and a couple of boulders to climb over and you, a couple of mountains to climb. But you can do this. How many times has someone come to me and say, Ron, you can do this. You can do this. Don't give up. You can do this. It means the world, the beauty of humanity, touching one another and encouraging one another. We're in this thing called life together. So we got two missions this week. One is we walk in gratitude of all those who have fanned our flames. Number two, we are going to walk in this week looking for folks of being, as they say, our intuition, our antennas are up, looking for people we can encourage. And I guarantee you, if you encourage others, 
you too will be encouraged. Guys, that's what this Motivation Monday is all about. What says you? Let's see what you're saying. Let's see what you're saying in here. Jasmine says, agreed, Ron. 100%. The news has been very depressing. Well, I saw a video of two elders meeting and uplifting a young Black woman in Mexico. Those moments remind me that there is good in the world. Amen to that. Okay. Chrissy says, I love that idea. I love this. Trish has the flames and the fans. We got flame, fans and flames. Kelly says, yes, thankful for my pastor each Sunday. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, that's why some of us go to church. That's why some of us go to the mosque. That's why some of us go to all of the, the Jewish temples. That's why we go to these places to be encouraged to have our flames kindled. Yeah. Rashawn says, I'm definitely on a mission. I'm definitely on a mission. I see more fans. I see more fans. I see more fans out on, on, the, on the board. Ali says, yes, we all have a mission or missions. Yeah, you guys are speaking. You guys are speaking. Yes. Set your life in fire. Seek those who fan your flames. Rumi. Nice. Nice. I love when this community gets is activated. Trish says, we even get an extra day leap year means keep leaping. Do new things in a new way. That's right. The 29th is an extra day. An extra day to leap and to fan the flames of others and to be thankful. Let's show some gratitude. If you're depressed, if you're having a bad day, can I challenge you to just stop and look around and be grateful? Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. I think we can call in the day, y'all. What do y'all say? You think we can call in the day? We have some people in here today. Guys, if you are in the in the YouTube, sorry, if you're in the Instagram area, come on over to YouTube. Better experience. We connect. You get to comment. I get to show it. Come on over. Join, subscribe. And guys, if this is a blessing to you, these moments of time together, hit the likes. Let YouTube know you like this platform. Let the folks know you like this platform. You like what we're doing here. Hit the like, the greatest compliment you can give any cre content creator is hit the like and pass on the information. That's right. Ah, oh, Kimmy says, beautiful start to the week. It's a beautiful start to the week. How you start the week? Well, Help you navigate the week. <laughs> Serena says, sing your song, Ron. Come on over. Can I sing it? Can I sing it, Serena? Come on over. Come on over, baby. Yes, right. Come on over to our YouTube channel. And if you are here for the first time, subscribe and pass it on. Don't just subscribe. Pass it on. Pass it on. Oh, is this, it says I've lost my connection with Instagram, but that's okay. Instagram is always unstable. <laughs> it says we lost our connection with them. That's okay. We love you in Instagram, but sometimes Instagram doesn't want to cooperate, but that's okay. Come on over to YouTube if you see this. Okay, we're taking off. Uh, Rashawn says, a great way to start the week with some encouraging words. Thank you, everyone. Edie is in the building. I'm oh, sorry. That's the Edie. Eddie is in the building. Eddie Red is in the building. Uh, la, 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 la. Let me see who else is in here. Okay. So, guys, just so you know what's coming up, got a couple of announcements. And um, we have 
um, announcement time. I'm just going to put that there. Um, the third Saturday of this month, we have a photography class for the Patreon community. So come on out to that. That is going to be the topic of ISO. We are going to talk about ISO on the third Thursday of this month. We try to meet every third Thursday. I teach my Patreon community. And on that note, if you are not a member of the Patreon community, you can join the Patreon community by supporting what I do and content creating. So there you go. Join Patreon. It's www.patreon.com. Ron Lewis Photos. You can click on that. But we have our class coming up on the third Thursday of, um, of uh, March. And on the fourth Saturday, we have our, um, our RLP Urban Photographers Meetup. We will be meeting at uh, in Soho, and we're doing our gallery hop that we do every March. So we'll be hopping to all the art galleries in Soho, and uh, and a lot of those will be photography-driven galleries. So you can see some of the works of uh, other photographers, uh, like at White Wall, White Hall. We'll be at White, sorry, White Wall, White Wall, not White Hall. White Wall will be at the um, their gallery. We're going to be going to several other galleries as well. Um, so check that out. Uh, I'll be posting all of that on Friday by Friday, so that way you'll have all that information online. But just kind of give you a heads up. That's where we're going. Uh, also, uh, Jamel Shabazz, his uh, event is still going on in um, the East Side. So check that out as well. And um, and if you have not seen Giant, go up to the Brooklyn Museum and check that out as also. Okay, I think we got everything here. Uh, yes, Amparo, Amparo joined the Patreon community. Yes, she did. A Patreon, a Amparo is a paying member of supporting me and my work here and, and being a creative. Thank you, uh, Amparo, for becoming a Patreon member. Thank you so much. And um, it's me, Ron, Andy, your cousin. Oh, oh, it's Andy. <laughs> it's my cousin. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sorry, Edie. Oh, my bad. Yes, it is my cousin. Do you know we found out we were cousins? I I met her through my um through ancestry.com. We connected through ancestry.com. And um, yeah, what a beautiful thing to connect with your relatives and your relatives that you didn't know you have, and you connect with them and now you are connected. So I love that we live in a great world today, guys. I know there's a lot going on, but there's a lot to be grateful for. There's a lot to be grateful for. Yeah. Don't don't be crushed by all the crazy negative work stuff that's going on in the world. There's a lot to be thankful for. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining us today on our Touch Base Daily. Um, tomorrow we are, are doing our Tip Tuesday. We are going to have tips on photography. And I'm not going to give you what that tip is because I'm, I'm in debate of which one it is. I think it's on the schedule. It should be on the YouTube schedule. Let me see what, what's on the YouTube schedule for tomorrow because it does say it. So um, what is on what's coming up on our YouTube Okay, come up. There it goes. It says coming up. There we go. Coming up. Coming up is... Yeah, it wouldn't show it quickly there like I wanted to do. Oh, here we go. Tip Tuesday, cityscapes. That's what we're talking. Cityscapes. How to take pictures in of cityscapes. So that's what we're talking tomorrow. And also, just since we're on the topic of what's coming up this week, Omar Ramos will be on, on our Wednesday, our own Omar Ramos will be sharing. I am interviewing him. You're going to learn things about Omar that you have never learned before. <laughs> but also we're going to be talking about his participation in a great event that's happening in the photography world out in, I think it's Las Vegas. So we'll be talking about that. He's going to be representing a company called Cheetah. Um, Cheetah, uh, that do diffusers. And all that stuff. So we'll be talking that on Wednesday. He's our special guest on Wednesday for our Wisdom Wednesday. Okay. And uh, yes, Haiti says different names on Instagram and YouTube. Yes, yes. But tomorrow we'll be talking um, cityscapes. 
So we'll be doing that. So join us tomorrow. And I think that's it. I think we're good. I think we are ready to end this wonderful Touch Base Daily. We're just one minute over time. No, we're on time. No, yeah, we started at 16 after and we're ending at 16 after. So guys, have a wonderful Monday and a wonderful week. Be a fanner or a flame igniter. Get in there. Anyway, talk to you later.